Hey everybody, welcome to Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy. First off, big spoilers for Game of Thrones are ahead. There were some real tearjerker moments on Game of Thrones this week, like Jamie's harsh breakup with Brienne, the death of Rhaegal, and especially Missandei's execution. But there was one sad moment that confused a lot of fans. Why did Jon abandon Ghost without saying goodbye? After all, in the books, Ghost hardly leaves Jon's side. But on the show, he's been seen less and less since Jon's resurrection. He only had a cameo in The Long Night, and then Jon sends him off to a farm north of the Wall. Why? Well, the answer is complicated and steeped in the symbolism of the show. Each major house in Westeros has a house sigil that's usually an animal. These aren't just randomly chosen mascots, each sigil in a way defines its house. The Targaryens are passionate and violent, so their symbol is a red dragon. The Lannisters are wealthy and can dominate with reputation rather than force, hence the lion. But no house's sigil is more appropriate than the Starks, as Arya and Sansa made clear last season. When the snows fall and the white winds blow, the lone wolf dies. But the pack survives. Dire wolves only live in the far north. They hunt in packs, they're loyal to their own, and they are fierce warriors, all traits of the Starks. The Stark children's bond with the wolves is more literal in the books. In addition to Bran warging into summer, other Starks warg into their wolves in their dreams. The show hasn't been subtle about its dire wolf symbolism. When Ned and his children first encountered the wolves, they were puppies. The mother had been killed by a stag. This foreshadowed House Baratheon, whose sigil is a stag, killing Ned. When they first find the pups, Theon offers to kill them, foreshadowing that he'll later betray the family and take Winterfell. However, it's Jon who points out that this can't be a coincidence. There are five pups, one for each of the Stark children. The direwolf is a sigil of your house. You were meant to have them. You'll train them yourselves, you'll feed them yourselves, and if they die, you will bury them yourselves. Ned's warning turns out to be prophetic. Each of the pups is tied to not just the child's life, but their inner core is a Stark. Sansa's wolf, Lady, is kind and gentle as Sansa used to be. But when Sansa betrays her sister, and by extension, her family, Lady is put to death. This is because Sansa has abandoned the northern part of herself in order to try to impress Joffrey. I didn't see. Yeah! Yeah! Arya forces Nymeria to flee rather than face death in King's Landing. This symbolized Arya's wild nature and how she defies the gender norms of Westeros. We'll marry a high lord and rule this castle. No. That's not me. Several seasons later, when they're reunited, Arya recognizes herself in the wolf. That's not you. Grey Wind, Rob's wolf, always follows him into battle and is killed at the Red Wedding, just like Rob. They are both decapitated, symbolizing that House Stark is without a leader. Rickon's wolf, Shaggy Dog, symbolized the child's wild nature as he ran around unsupervised after his parents left Winterfell. Shaggy Dog is, of course, killed shortly before his owner. And Bran's wolf, Summer, earned his name because Bran was born during a long summer and never knew winter. This wolf died defending Bran at the moment he became the Three-Eyed Raven. So, there's layers of symbolism here. This is the moment Bran stopped being a Stark, and it's the moment the Night King truly started his advance, when summer ended and winter began. So what about Ghost? He was the runt of the litter and nearly forgotten. In many ways, he's like Jon, the bastard of his family. His name, Ghost, implies that Jon is haunted by the past, which he is because his secret parentage hung over his head his entire life. You are a Stark. You might not have my name, but you have my blood. Ghost is white, and this also has significance. When the bastard becomes head of a house, the sigil's collars are inverted. So the gray wolf on a white background would become the white wolf on a gray background. On the show, the only extended period of time Jon is without Ghost is when he briefly joins the wildling raiding party in the gift. During this time, he has to pretend to forsake his heritage, so Ghost stays locked up at Craster's Keep. After Jon rejoins the Night's Watch, he's reunited with his wolf. Ghost fights by his side until Jon gets a shiny new pet, Rhaegal the Dragon. Rhaegal is also symbolic of Jon's heritage. He is named after Jon's father, Rhaegar. The revelation of Jon's true identity changes him. At the end of episode four, he knows that he is not truly of the North, nor of the South. He is a combination of both. Now that he's aware of this heritage, he's ready to embrace his Targaryen, or Southern side. He's in love with Daenerys, and he knows that it will be a long time before he returns North, if ever at all. Jon has always wanted what's best for the North. In his mind, the North and Ghost are better off without him. By removing himself, he's also freeing the North of the lie that he's Ned Stark's son. Now Sansa, Ned's trueborn child, can rule the North. And he doesn't just abandon Ghost, he asks Tormund to look after him. Will you take him with you? He'll be happier up there. 
So, by giving up Ghost, John is sacrificing his own happiness for his wolves. In the same way, he's sacrificing his desire to stay in the North for his duties that wait in the South. Ghost represents John's identity as a Northerner. By sending him away, he's symbolically letting go of his Northern heritage and his lifelong dream to be a true-born Stark. So John doesn't give Ghost a tearful goodbye because, in a way, the wolf is no longer a part of him. John is no longer a bastard longing to be a Stark. He's going to become his own man. On the other hand, John's new pet, Rhaegal, symbolizes his embrace of his Targaryen heritage. So Rhaegal's death means that now, John is truly trapped between two worlds. After revealing his true identity to Daenerys, he can't fly beside her as a Targaryen, and he can't rule in the North as a Stark. He's caught between the worlds of ice and fire, between his sworn moral code and his passion for Daenerys. The main conflict in these last two episodes isn't just with Cersei, it's with John, reckoning who he wants to be and how he can best serve the realm. Do you guys have any theories on who's going to sit on the Iron Throne? If you do, let me know in the comments below. And if you're new here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.